Good evening, it is the 26th of November 2020, 8 o'clock local time. This video is uh, in memory of those who died and those who sacrificed themselves in that dastardly terrorist attack by the Pakistanis 12 years ago in Mumbai. I also mourn the death of Diego Maradona, who I have always considered the finest footballer ever, particularly because he ensured single-handedly that his country, Argentina, won the World Cup in 1986 and the goal he scored against the English on 22nd of June 1986 in the quarterfinals is still considered a magical feat. It was poetry in motion. When he ran those 70 yards, he outflanked, outmaneuvered, outdribbled six English footballers and then outsmarted the goalkeeper. That means seven in all English footballers to score the second goal of that quarterfinal. Now, that blow is still remembered by the English. They have not forgotten it, nor have they forgiven Maradona for the first goal, which was courtesy the hand of God. Now, the English today also continue to be in the doldrums. Their uh, finance uh, secretary has spoken yesterday in their parliament or officially that they are facing a recession of the kind which they have not seen in the last 300 years. This will be a massive economic blow to the English, but yet they continue with their illogical lockdowns. And I hope our people here in India be very, very careful when they impose a lockdown in the near future or in the distant future, despite the uh, arrival of potential arrival of vaccines against uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Now, a lot was spoken, a lot has been written, a lot has been uh, discussed of the AstraZeneca vaccine made by the uh, collaboration of uh, Oxford University, researchers in Oxford University and the Swedish-British company AstraZeneca. The problem with this vaccine is that uh, there are too many red flags in their data. Of course, the data has is yet to be uh, published in a peer-reviewed journal, but we have press reports which are quite perplexing. The reason is very simple. They have uh, completed or have done an interim analysis of their phase three trial, which is riddled with holes. I will explain this further. Unlike the other two companies, Pfizer and Moderna, which also have done a phase three trial, Pfizer had uh, 43,000 volunteers, Moderna had 30,000 volunteers, and both have shown an efficacy of their vaccine to the tune of 95%. <clears throat> now, they used uh, what is called an mRNA vaccine, which I have explained earlier, is that they have a synthetic uh, messenger RNA, which they inject into the human uh, shoulder. And there, the messenger RNA, which is contained in a fat bubble or a lipid particle, makes sure that the ribosomes in your cells make the spike proteins of the virus and these uh, spike proteins then elicit an immune response which is uh, supposed to prevent a future infection and their interim analysis that is both by Moderna and by Pfizer has shown yes that they do prevent infection in the sense that they prevent symptoms we still do not know whether they prevent asymptomatic infection and because of that, I must warn you that, and I think I've been doing this earlier also, that a vaccine will not be a panacea against this pandemic. A vaccine is not a magic bullet or a silver bullet. This has to be kept in mind because of the uh, glaring questions. That is, number one, we do not know the duration of immunity. We do not know whether these vaccines prevent mortality. In fact, no randomized trial has shown a reduction in mortality by influenza vaccines. We do not know whether these uh, vaccines will prevent infection. We do know that these vaccines uh, 
can prevent symptoms but we do not know whether they prevent transmission which means that even if you are vaccinated then you may be you could develop an asymptomatic infection and therefore you could be a source of infection to other people we also don't know the long term side effects of these vaccines but yet the important thing is that both moderna and pfizer have uh, submitted their protocols to the fda for authorization and this authorization should be with them in the next uh, within 2 weeks the the good thing about their protocols is that they have clearly explained the way they have done their phase 3 trial that is they have uh, elaborated on their methods they have uh, clearly outlined the way they have calculated their results and how they have used the statistics and what is most important is that this was a single phase 3 trial each done by moderna and by pfizer also pfizer had 41% of volunteers above the age of 55 years now please remember this i will repeat this that pfizer has had 41% of volunteers above the age of 55 years moderna had almost 25% of people above the age of 65 years in their phase 3 trial and above all both companies have given their uh, their entire study entire protocol their entire paper has been uh, submitted to the fda for approval for their for the emergency authorization by the fda now unlike the uh, moderna and the pfizer vaccine data the data provided by astrazeneca is very very sketchy there are too many loopholes there are too many red flags now the astrazeneca vaccine is a vaccine which uses a uh, 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 safe uh, common cold adenovirus as a taxi this taxi carries the dna material which codes for the spike protein so what happens here is that you use the uh, adenovirus uh, vector you inject that the vector is uh, containing the uh, dna particle and the dna then uh, commands or, or uh, prompts the dna in the cells to manufacture the spike proteins which then elicit an immune response the oxford vaccine has a chimpanzee uh, adenovirus this has been of course modified in that the vaccine the uh, the virus once uh, it has been modified is incapable of uh, multiplying in the body it is incapable of replicating so therefore the virus is harmless now so far so good the other good news is that this vaccine will be very cheap as compared to moderna and pfizer also this vaccine is being manufactured in pune by the serum institute so therefore it will be available to the government of india and thereby to us and the third thing is that this vaccine can be stored for months in a fridge but then the good news ends then we have uh, many many problems the first problem is that astrazeneca has failed to provide all its data as a single phase 3 trial what they have done is they are providing information based on sub populations or sub groups now scientifically this is not uh, valid this is uh, subject to bias for instance the uh, astrazeneca trial has been done the reports which have come are from two trials one which was started in brazil in the month of june and the other one is the trial which began in the uk in the month of may now what they've done is they have mixed up the uh, data firstly they began with a dose of uh, 50 billion viral particles in one dose but they have landed up using doses ranging from 35 billion viral particles to 65 billion viral particles now that is a changing of the goal post during a trial which is unacceptable by a by a very very careful or a rigorous uh, regulatory authority the second thing is that uh, they found out 
and this they claim is by sheer accident. They found out by sheer accident or it was a mistake that the people who were given half the dose initially and then the full dose later on had a 90% efficacy. Now this is uh, highly, uh, what should I say, very very dodgy stuff because uh, you cannot do an international trial on a vaccine and make such a huge blunder that you don't realize that people have been given a suboptimal dose. And how did they find this uh, mistake? They figured out this mistake because they noticed that the volunteers who were given the dosage of their vaccine did not develop the anticipated side effects. So then they realized that these people were, were being given half the usual dose. Anyway, AstraZeneca now claims that the people who were given half the dose on day zero and then the full dose after a month, these people landed up with 90% efficacy. But the important thing here, again, is to realize that this was uh, when you take this stuff, this has been seen in only 2,700 odd uh, volunteers, which means that this data is not powered enough to tell us whether actually the vaccine was effective. The other thing is that uh, the AstraZeneca study, there was particularly in the group which showed efficacy of 90%, this group, they did not include anyone above the age of 55 years. Now the vaccine has to work in vulnerable, vulnerable people and if it works in people below the age of 55 years then it really is not uh, super effective. The third problem is that uh, in the English subset of uh, volunteers they used uh, a meningococcal vaccine shot in the, uh, in the control group whereas in the Brazilian side they used the uh, uh, placebo as a salt water injection. Now these uh, these points are very important because we see that there is uh, a lot of uh, there is a lack of uniformity in how they conduct how they conducted their phase 3 trial now these will be major red flags and i have serious doubts whether the fda will approve this vaccine however the vaccine the the uh, the data has uh, been submitted or will be submitted to other authorities such as in Canada, in England, in, in Europe, and the outcomes there would be different, but the FDA would be very rigid and would ask for more information from AstraZeneca. So right now we stand with this uh, bit of information that the phase three trial done by AstraZeneca is, uh, is uh, full of some uh, is uh, not devoid of gaps there are serious gaps and because of these gaps there are serious issues despite the fact that the vaccine may be cheap could be stored for a long time in your regular fridge but the data is not uh, having the uh, required weightage does not have the uh, required uh, or demanded uh, scientific uh, rigor now this is very important because uh, to satisfy the uh, public because uh, we are aware that large sections of the community across the world are wary of uh, vaccination against COVID-19. It is not that they are anti-vaxxers but because there is some hesitancy and if data is presented uh, so, uh, so weakly in uh, in a such a in such a slip shot manner then this will not go very far in uh, convincing the people who are hesitant about these vaccines now where does this land us with the important thing is that india to the best of my knowledge has as of now placed no orders with the uh, moderna or with the uh, pfizer for their vaccines and even if they do I doubt if Moderna or Pfizer will be in a position to deliver them to us till uh, the end of next year because all their vaccines have been booked by, by the US, by, by England and uh, possibly by Europe especially by Germany so we would be in a, in a quandary and uh, yes 
there's this other information which I read on Twitter. There was a very senior executive in the Bharat Biotech company, which is making the inactivated Indian vaccine, who said that the efficacy of the Indian vaccine will be 60%. Now, 60% is really not very high. And uh, the important thing is, without completing the phase three trial, how did this executive uh, come to the conclusion that the efficacy of the Indian vaccine would be 60%. Now, this is something beyond uh, my imagination because uh, to everyone's uh, knowledge, to everyone's information, the Indian vaccine phase three trial began just uh, a few days back and very few days back, uh, it, uh, it was given to the, uh, to the Home Minister and the Health Minister of Haryana. So just within a week of the uh, onset of the phase three trial, we have a senior chap from the uh, Indian company, which is making the vaccine, stating publicly that the vaccine would have an efficacy of 60%. Now, this is a very, 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 uh, what's the word, a, a very uh, dubious uh, kind of an announcement and uh, not, uh, it is not something to be taken lightly, especially in uh, these times. Because uh, as I've been telling again and again, Yes, a vaccine will be a component in our armatarium, in our, uh, in our ammunition against the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, but it will not be the only weapon against the pandemic because we still do not know whether it stops uh, asymptomatic infections. We know, yes, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines do stop symptoms, do prevent symptoms, but we do not know whether they prevent uh, asymptomatic infection. So therefore, we do not know whether this uh, vaccine or these vaccines will help in getting us herd immunity. So therefore, if and when the vaccines do come, we do not straight away come into normalcy. We do not come back to the old times. We will have to continue wearing masks. We will have to continue keeping our distances. And uh, it will be still difficult times for us. Apart from that, there is some good news. This is a paper published two or three days back in a journal called Nature Communications, which has an impact factor of more than 12. To put things in perspective, the Indian Heart Journal has an impact factor of one and a half to two. So therefore, the Nature Journal, the Nature Communications Journal is a serious journal. And the paper published in this journal is, uh, is quite exciting because this paper describes the work done by these researchers who have examined almost 47,000 specimens, gene specimens of the COVID-19 virus from 99 countries across the world. And what they found out is very interesting. They found out that uh, there were 13,000 mutations in this virus. There have been 13,000 mutations. And despite these 13,000 mutations, there is no increase in the infectivity or the transmission uh, capability of the virus, which means that for over all these months, there have been mutations, there have been thousands of mutations of this virus, but the virus has not become more infective, nor has it become more virulent. So this is good news, and I will provide a link for this. And uh, in uh, towards the end, I can only say this, that we are waiting with fingers crossed for a good vaccine. We still do not know which would be the best vaccine. As of now, three companies have uh, presented the interim uh, data and of these three, Pfizer and uh, Moderna are scoring much higher than the AstraZeneca vaccine. So that is important to remember. And it is also important to keep in mind that the Moderna vaccine can be stored in a regular fridge for one month and can be stored in a regular freezer for six months. With this, I will stop now. Good night. And I hope you have uh, gained some more information. And if you liked this video, please press the like icon and uh, press the uh, bell button and uh, do share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. Thank you very much. Good night.